Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shaifadzila Omar Ali, and I am from the University of Manchester, uh, from the School of uh, Environment, Education and Development. I am here virtually to present a paper entitled Using Peer Borders Theory to Holistically Profile Online Learners. A paper uh, that I've co-authored with my colleague, who is also from the University of Manchester, Dr. Gary Motoram. Now, this paper comes from my undergoing research in the field of online learning. My research context obviously revolves around online learners coming from different nationalities. However, my recent pursuit involves an investigation of online learning and its implementation in my home country, Brunei, which is not that far from the Philippines, both geographically and culturally. If you have read our paper, Although it is supported by several studies that I have conducted in the past, the main focus on this paper that I'm presenting today is in fact the theoretical framework that structures my investigation of online learners in Brunei, in the United Kingdom, and also in a multicultural online setting. This paper is an account of how peer bodies theory is a reliable and novel way to profile online learners. Now, let me first briefly introduce who Pierre Bourdieu is. Pierre Bourdieu is a French sociologist whose life pursuit revolves around identifying and profiling individuals based on social class, social power, social inequality. His work has been extensively referred to in the studies of social standing. But in terms of profiling online learners, I believe that our research is perhaps the first paper to do so perhaps. Obviously, uh, the issue that I emphasize in my research is the profiling of learners, specifically online learners. Now, learner profiling has been practiced for more than a hundred years. There have been many learning theories or learning models that have been used to measure our learners. We as educators and policymakers are likely aware that there are several significant characteristics that make learners successful in online learning. In fact, there have been several studies in the last decade or so that have tried to profile online learners, with the main objective being that educators and also policymakers to a certain extent have a measure or a more uh, pragmatic understanding of what contributes to a learner's success in online learning. So, uh, what learning models have been used in the past by researchers to profile learners, or in, in this case, online learners. Uh, in my paper, I have mentioned several studies that employed specific learning models or learning theories. Uh, but for the sake of clarity, I would like to mention these models once more. Several of these studies include the use of established learning theories and psychometric tests, such as learning styles, which itself is a theory with many variants such as the VAK model, the VARK model, and Kolb's uh, learning inventory. Then, there are psychometric instruments such as multiple intelligences, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the Big Five personality test. And then further, there are more technology-focused models, such as technology acceptance models, which include Venkatesh's uh, unified theory of acceptance and use of technology, uh, the online learning acceptance model, or even the Theta and Collins uh, lazy user model, which is based on using whichever technology is easiest and most convenient. Still, there are models based on digital literacies and models specifically made for learning, learning with technology, such as Theo's digital native assessment scale and the online learning readiness scale. And then there are other age-old theories, age-old theories that have been referred to, uh, such as study habits, personality measures, motivation, and so on. Some of these models uh, date back to the early 1900s. Uh, the studies have shown that we can adapt these established theories to current context, yes, to the context that we have now. Now, but we also need to acknowledge that teaching has changed. Learning, and has, learning has changed and uh, technology, oh, how technology has changed. 
the internet has been uh, what people call nowadays as an absolute game changer that requires us to learn new knowledge and skills what they call as 21st century skills now with 21st century skills we have 21st century learning and with 21st century learning we have 21st century learners these 21st century learners uh, online learners being uh, what I would say a subgroup are likely to have different preferences and dispositions towards learning with technology you might be aware that some research coined these learners as digital natives generation Z the net generation because of how they supposedly are capable of and are more predisposed towards using online technology this to me is a sweeping generalization that learners are more or less the same that learners are homogeneous I personally believe that learners are very much different that learners are heterogeneous however I also hold the theory that learners who share similar characteristics may exhibit similar dispositions towards learning online I have been continuously doing, uh, doing my research on profiling these 21st century online learners I am aware that there has been a lot of research done previously using models such as learning styles and personality psychometrics uh, even I started this research journey using these uh, what I call standalone, mod standalone models they stand alone uh, I call them standalone models because I believe that learners cannot be typified based on their personality alone or their, prefer their preferred sensory stimulation alone sense of hearing, sense of touch, sense of sight and then there is also the risk of self-fulfilling prophecy that when you predetermine how you want to group your learners when you predetermine how you want to group your learners beforehand your findings will exclusively revolve around that explanation for example if uh, you as a teacher uh, start with right I will group my learners based on visual auditory and kinesthetic learners you will likely at the end of the day have groups of visual auditory and kinesthetic learners yes no doubt but will this not create the illusion the false perception that one that you regard the learning model of your choice as the highest authority in describing how students learn best and then disregarding other learner dimensions is that true and that two that learners are forever constrained to one preferred way of learning is that true cannot they move from one type of learner to another cannot they learn and relearn their preferences so the learner is made up of many dimensions not just the standalone dimensions of uh, personality or learning style the upbringing and social support the study habits the technology that they own what they use these technologies for the motivation in using these technologies the motivation in learning there is seemingly there is a seemingly endless number of dimensions that account for a learner's success in online learning learners are simply multi-dimensional so why are we using standalone learning models that only address a small part of their multi-dimensionality I have worked several years in the executive policy making side of education and I found the idea of executing decisions based on one or two dimensions alone quite haphazard so where does peer bodies theory come into play now a few years ago with the intention of profiling learners holistically and not just based on one single dimension I decided to try and combine several of these learning theories together into a research instrument that I call the online learner profiling questionnaire or OLP for short combining learning models together to get a bigger picture of the learner is not really a new approach several studies have done this in the past however when I tried incorporating more than six learning models 
uh, which provided my OLP instrument more than 150 items. I found out that many of these items overlapped. Several learning models in parts were actually measuring the same dimensions. Statistical analysis then proved quite meaningless because of the errors in the output. It soon dawned upon me that I needed to rearrange these items, detach them from their predetermined theories to enable them to interact and interplay, instead of fighting over which theory is more dominant. In finding a framework to reorganize these liberated items, I began looking at the works of uh, Habermas, Marx, Foucault, and uh, Bourdieu. What sold me to Bourdieu was that his theory uh, fitted well with how I wanted to frame my approach. I didn't want the research to be based on predetermined learning models because I don't want to impose theories on the learners. Instead, I want the learners to tell me, based on their feedback, what are the, the significant dimensions that need to be taken into account. I also didn't want to use learning models that have limitations in recognizing that learners' preferences change over time. Because they do, learners' preferences, they change over time. I want a theory that allows learners to dy the dy dynamically, sorry, to dynamically move from one type to another type. Because learners are themselves dynamic. Bodhi's theory gave the research an overarching framework that can account for every single dimension that is found in any learning model because his key constructs of capitals and dispositions are liberal and all-encompassing. To use an, an, uh, an analogy, if all the dimensions are elements, if all the learner dimensions are elements of the world, Bourdieu's theory is the periodic table that, organize, uh, that organizes these elements. Bourdieu's theory revolves around uh, the interlocking nature of his three main thinking tools, or his key constructs. Uh, the tools of the constructs of habitus, feel, and capital. Bodhi believes that every individual has a portfolio of capital that shapes them. And then there are several types of capital. Social capital includes uh, the social support from family members, from friends, from teachers, experiences and upbringing of the learner in society. Economical capital includes the money, the funding, the resources the learner has or has access to. Cultural capital includes religious beliefs and cultural principles. Intellectual capital includes the learner's intelligence, uh, education, skills. And then more recently, uh, Rojas, uh, Strobar, Rochaudhuri, and Okur expanded the concept further uh, with techno capital, which includes the internet devices uh, the learner has and his skills in using them. According to Moore, uh, the interplay of these capitals results in the learner exhibiting dispositions and behavior when interacting with the learning environment, in this case, the online learning environment. A collection of these dispositions is what Bourdieu calls as habitus. The habitus represents a complete holistical representation of the learner. Bourdieu's theory here encompasses all the other predetermined models without itself being restricted to predetermined constructs due to its emphasis on establishing interactions between behavior a priori. To summarize, uh, learners are multidimensional. Attempts in profiling them based on limited dimensions do not give us a holistic picture of our learners. Attempts in profiling them based on predetermined models constrains our understanding only within what we want to see. Attempts in profiling them based on clearly distinguished taxonomies discount the reality that learners' preferences and dispositions change over time. If we want to implement a sustainable and complete online learning system, we need to acknowledge that learners are much bigger 
than learning styles or personality or digital literacy. Because learners are dynamic individuals that should not be forced to adapt to the online learning system, but that should be provided with an online learning system that adapts to and anticipate learner changes. Thank you for your kind attention and I would like uh, to end my presentation here. Hopefully, I can answer any question time permitting. Uh, for queries after this session, I can be reached through these contact details over here. Once again, thank you for your kind attention and have a pleasant day.